Alright everybody, this is advice. I don't know how well, yeah, I guess you can see in here. Okay, see this right here? That's the, uh, uh oh, better not lose that. That's my lock ring. This is the spacing, or spacer that's in here. That's supposed to be a bearing. According to their advertising, this is supposed to be bearing. Fits up inside of here, and that lowers, you know, the amount of effort you got to put into uh, to clamping the vise. You see how that fits in there, right? So I mean, yeah, it's a little bit loose in that hole, but I'm pretty sure I can take this spacer off and I can go find a thrust bearing that will fit here in this size. But, uh, I don't know, I sure hope the manufacturer over here makes, makes good on what they have sold me. Well, I, I guess they're not the manufacturer, they're the, the seller. They don't build these things, they make them in China for as little as they can, you know, afford to spend. Oh, I'm sorry for the extreme close-up here on the overarm. Um, other issue... Nothing really huge, I suppose. I mean, I bought it because it was cheaper. But every... Every corner that was on this thing, and I mean on the jaws and... Down inside of here, and, and just everywhere. There were just burrs on everything. So if you ever get one of these, just expect that you're going to have to take it apart and... Do all the finishing work that, that you know, they should have done. But, you know, I'm okay with that half an hour of work to save myself a couple hundred dollars, that's not a big deal. Um, the other thing, it's a little bit bigger than than the burrs. See this little mark right here? There's supposed to be a zero mark right here so you can read the graduations on, on this you know, the degrees over here on this, this thing. But they never bothered to stamp that. So I guess I'm going to have to put that on there somehow too. Uh, I'll have to take this thing off here. And off the bed and set it on there. And oh, tram in the, the vise while it's sitting on this plate. They got key plugs on this thing here. And boy, they fit pretty good. That's not even bolted down. But it's... That part they did a pretty decent job on. There's almost no movement there. So I don't know. Maybe it's better that I put my zero mark in once I got the vise trammed, you know, and then it'll be right on for my machine because, you know, who knows how much care they're going to take over in China. Oh, uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Here's my other issue. So, this is my one-inch arbor for the brown and sharp mill, and this cutter something where you can see it. You can see the keyway here. It's a uh, oh, quarter inch. It's got a little bit of, you know, it's got a little bit of play there, but that's a quarter inch key. Okay. That keyway though, I sure don't fit into this thing here. So, I should have probably measured it, but I thought it was, well, maybe it's 530 seconds. Nope. Okay. Maybe it's an eighth. Now, eighth goes in, but it's really loose. Sloppy, you know? Let's see if we can find a better spot on this key. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. That's not very good. Most cutters this size, I'm pretty sure, have quarter-inch keyways. So I may see about taking this thing and getting a quarter inch keyway cut into it. I'll probably have to I gotta find somebody with a bridge board vertical to, to do that I think. Oh, I don't know, this one looks like it was cut with a with a wheel cutter. Maybe I can take it over to my buddy Irving's house, cut it over there. Um the only thing is, I don't know if this is hard, but if the dimples from the ball peen hammer or somebody see all these dimple marks they've been putting into this thing? Somebody in the past was using a ball peen hammer to, to jar the taper loose instead of
putting a punch in the back and driving it loose. Uh, I don't know. That's an, an annoyance, but I mean, I don't know. It's probably not really messing things up too bad. Maybe when I'll take it out and maybe I might try to touch it up just a little bit with a file or something to take the high points off. The main thing is that it's more or less concentric and that the the key fits good in the slot and into the cutter, but that certainly isn't going to happen at the moment, is it? What else we got left to do here? Oh, I bought some of these uh, wire wheels and stuff. I want to. There's a lot of rust kind of on the bed here. It's not. It's not eating into it really bad, but no, I'm sure it's probably a little bit of pitting here, but. I want to get most of that off there just to make sure it's, uh, you know, nice and flat. When I put my vise on there, I'm not, you know, any less accurate than what it should be. There's one more repair other than the flywheels i got to remember to do. I believe it's down here. I don't know if you can really see this ear right here. Is that the one? I believe it's that one, but that ear is broken. <laughs> it's held in there with the screw. The screw that's holding this piece on is holding it in there. But I got to get that thing out of there, which means I got to take this whole little gearbox off. Um, uh, I'm not sure what all we got to get. Let's have a look up underneath here. Right there. Is that the one that's broken? Oh, sorry about that. Well, anyway. One screw on that side, yep, and another screw on the other side. So I think if I take those four screws off, there's a U-joint on the shaft that this thing here, those gearboxes, you know, there's a shaft back there. U-joints on that, so I should be able to swing it over and get it out. Uh, oh, in fact, I can even, I can just unbolt the U-joint right there. Just lay the shaft down. Probably, I, I need to probably take that shaft out and clean up everything really good in there too. Haven't really gotten into that yet. Once I got the hand wheels done, and that, I mean, I could I could operate the mill manually. That's that's the power feed drive, right? That's what drives the table. Uh, I would rather not put it under power with a broken, you know, mounting point on it. Probably it wouldn't hurt nothing, but who knows? They may have been running it that way anyhow. Anyway, after that, we're ready to go. Uh, I got a new plug wired onto this thing, so I, I can power it up. I mean, the mill runs. Uh, kind of a little funky setup with this. I know I showed you before, but it's got this transmission old uh, 1930s automotive transmission up here <laughs> so uh, and reverse is one of the speeds <laughs> here's the here's the plate first gear is 180 rpm second is 240 uh, third is 320 reverse is 280 so that's like not even in order there um, and if you put it in back gear, you get first is 60, second is 80, third is 120, so, and then reverse is 180. Uh, although when you put it in reverse, of course, the rotation switches, <laughs> but, uh, we, we can reverse the, we can reverse the motor with that little switch right there. So, I don't know. Uh, really, ultimately, I think I would like to uh, probably get myself, or, well, most likely I would have to cast one, but this big cone pulley right here, uh, the way this would originally would have ran was there would have been a line shaft of overhead, would have a matching pulley like this, and uh, that's what you would change your speed. So really, right now, I can only run on this cone. I get these other two settings here I can't use. 
don't know if anybody has any information on what the RPMs are supposed to be on the main line to get and then I don't even I guess I would have to get a, an RPM gauge um, in order to find out what the actual speeds would be you know on, on these three steps and then plus the uh, plus in back gear anyway that's it for this we'll see you all around